Hi there. My name is Patrick Tissingham, and I'm a managing partner at UTU, a company based in Brussels, Belgium. And for this session here, I'm going to talk about and demonstrate how you can create content sources to crawl your business data using the Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007. Before I demonstrate all of this, let me explain briefly what the business data catalog is all about. And here's a slide that shows you a high-level overview of the different components that play a role in the story. So in the middle, you see the business data catalog together with its metadata repository. And you really have to see the business data catalog as the middle tier layer between your front-end system, in this case SharePoint, and the back-end system, our line of business systems, and the traditional data stores that are playing the role of storing the business data in a very structured way. And the business data catalog is the mediator that you can leverage as an enterprise to expose that data in a unified and consistent way using APIs in the SharePoint environment. And SharePoint by itself has a lot of interface components that connect to the BDC out of the box. One of the features that's available directly out of the box is your option to create content sources that can be used to crawl the data available here in your line of business systems or within your data stores. The first step that you have to do as a developer is you have to create an XML file also referred to as the application definition file that models in a declarative way the system containing your business data. And in our case, we have a system of type database, but there's also the option to connect via a web service proxy to your line of business system. Next, we have the line of business system instance, the LOB system instance, which defines the different parameters that the business data catalog is going to use to connect you to your database. Next, within your application definition file, you're going to find the different entities. And we have two entities here, employee and department. We have a number of elements describing each of these entities. Important for us are the two methods that are defined. A first method called get employees is used to bring in the data regarding all of the employees inside the SharePoint environment. So we have the SQL statement. We also have different filter descriptor elements defining, for example, what users will be able to use within the business data web part. And then we have the definition of all of the parameters, the in and the return parameters. The second method here at the level of the entity employee is super important for the things we want to accomplish here within this session. Remember, our goal is to create a content source that can be used to crawl the business data that we model here. And in order for the crawler to do its work, you need to add a method of type ID enumerator to your application definition file. In our case, the method is called employee ID enumerator. And the goal of this method is to simply bring in all of the employee IDs into the SharePoint environment. And what the crawler will do is, for each of the employee IDs, it will then generate internally a profile page containing the different details of the employee, and it's going to index the contents on that profile page. There are a couple of other declarations here in the application definition file, like the declaration of an entity department and a method get departments, and we also have an association between department and employee. But do take away from this brief explanation of the application definition file that you need a method of type ID enumerator in your application definition file in order for your business data to be indexed. Now that you have finished the work on the XML file, the thing you have to do is navigate to the administration site of your shared service provider, where you will find a section called Business Data Catalog with a couple of actions you can perform. The first action is the importing of the application definition file itself. You just point to the XML file, 
and then using the import button you just transfer all of the XML declarations to the metadata repository and after a couple of seconds you will be able to start working with all of this metadata. So importing has been done successfully and we'll end up in the page where we can see the two entities and we can drill down into all of the information that we have stored within the application definition file. Creating a content source that will enable us to index all of this data is again done here in the administration side of the shared service provider by clicking on search settings and then by navigating to the manage content sources page where you see the one content source that is available out of the box we'll create a new one we'll give it a name called human resources and then we select business data as the type of content that we want to get crawled and the only thing we still need to do here is specify what kind of application that we want to get crawled we go for the one that we just imported and then we just press OK now that you have defined the content source you can start the full crawl and let the crawler do its work going to grab all of the IDs of the employees using the ID enumerator method and then one by one creating the profile page and indexing all of that content. After a while, of course depending on the amount of data that you're going to index, you will see the status become idle and we can have a look at the crawl log where you will see that we have a number of entries here indicating that we have successfully crawled all of the employees that are in the SQL Server database. Let's have a look at what the end user experience is now. Suppose that I'm an employee of this company and I'm in desperate need for an engineer. So what I can do is I can go to the search center, I can type in the keyword engineer, and what I will find are the different search results that match my query, and all of these results are representing items that are stored in my SQL Server database or possibly in a line of business system that I have indexed. I can click on one of the items and I can see all of the details here in the profile page. Now this was interesting for IT pros, but do know that a developer has a new object model that he or she can use to perform all of these steps using their c -sharp or VB.net applications. So what I have done here is I have removed the content source and I'm going to recreate it using this small Windows application that I have here. In order to talk to SharePoint, you need a couple of references. The first one is the Microsoft.Office.Server.dll. The second one gives us access to the classes that are part of the Search Admin API. It is the Microsoft.Office.Server.Search.dll. And then since we are going to talk to the BDC API, I also need a reference to the Microsoft.SharePoint.Portal.dll. In the coder, you're going to see a number of namespaces declared. The first set of namespaces are used for the search coding, and the second set are being used when we are going to access the BDC. Your entry point in the search admin object model is an instance of the class search context. With that, you can access all of the other classes, such as the content sources that we're going to manipulate. You get the instance of the search context by calling the getContext method, providing it with a parameter of type serverContext. ServerContext is the representation of the context of your shared service provider. And you grab this context by also calling a getContext method, but now providing it simply with the name of the shared service provider. There are a couple of things we are going to do in our application. The first is simply display all of the content sources that are currently defined. To access the content sources, you first need to create an instance of the content source class. You provide it with the parameter of type search context. Next, you can simply loop over all of the content sources 
and one by one, for example, adding them to a tree view. I also represent the different start addresses that are available for each of the content sources. When we select the content source, we can display some information about the content source. For example, what is the status of the crawl? When did we start the last crawl? And when was it completed? And of course, you can start a crawl, either a full crawl or an incremental crawl. And you do this by calling the respective methods, start full crawl or start incremental crawl. The final piece of our code are two event handlers. Let's have a look at this one first. This is the one that is going to populate a combo box with all of the business data applications that are available within the business data catalog. The main class to work with if you want to access the BDC is the application registry. This is your entry class. And at this level, you have a method called get LOB system instances. This one retrieves all of the instances that are available, so basically all of the application definitions, and one by one we can loop through them and add the name to the combo box. But since you are not running in the context of SharePoint, you will have to call one additional method. And that's the first one you see here. You have to call the set shared resource provider to use of a SQL session provider instance. And this will make sure that within your Windows application, you will be able to communicate with the BDC. The creation of the content source is displayed over here. So what you have here is the main class that we are using. It is the class of type business data content source. You need to create an instance of that class by calling the create method at the level of your content source collection. Then once you have the instance, you populate the start addresses. But the start address for a business data application is something special. It's not an HTTP or a network folder. So you need to first construct the URI, and you can do that by calling the construct start address method, which is a static method at the level of the business data content source type. And there are two parameters. One is the search application name, and the second one is the name of the business data application you want to connect to. Once you have this URI, you can add the URI to the start addresses, and then just call the update method to make sure that everything is nicely saved in the database. OK, let's see this code in action. So I'm building the project. And in a moment, we will have the Windows application up and running. So the first thing we can do is refresh our tree view. And we see the one content source that is currently available over here in the Manage Content Source page. And then if we click on the content source, we can see the crawl information. And possibly we can start a full crawl or an incremental crawl. I'm going to retrieve all of the BDC applications. And there's one that we have imported. And it's called HR. I'm going to create a content source with the name Human Resources. Click the Create button. And after a while, we have the content source created. It's available in our tree view. It's connected to the BDC app. And we have the same information here in the Manage Content Source page in our Shared Service Provider Administration site. So if I go to Edit, I'm able to see that my content source has been successfully created. It is connected to the HR application definition. And we can start a full crawl if needed. So this concludes this session here about how to create content sources that connect to business data applications. I have shown you how to do that in the browser using the administration pages. And I also have shown you how you can programmatically accomplish the same steps. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.